We begin by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and by bearing witness that none has the right to be worshipped or unconditionally obeyed except for him. And we bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam is his final mes messenger. We ask Allah to send his peace and blessings upon him, the prophets and messengers that came before him, his family and companions that served alongside him and those that follow in his blessed path until the day of judgment. And we ask Allah to make us amongst them. Allahumma ameen. Dear brothers and sisters, the entire khutbah that I want to give today is actually based upon a dua. And it's a dua that in some manifestation gets attributed to the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, but there is no authentic chain directly to him Alaihi Salatu Wasallam. But a powerful supplication from one of the Salaf, from one of the pious predecessors. And that is Umar ibn Abdul Aziz Rahimahullah Ta'ala. And we know from the Salaf that they had their connection with Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and they had their way of calling upon Allah that is very instructive to us to think about the way they perceived Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the narration is from Yahya ibn Sa'id. He says that كان كثيرا مما يدعو, that what was frequently recited in dua from Umar ibn Abdul Aziz rahimahullah ta'ala, and I'll read it very slow. Allahumma radlini bi qada'ik. Allahumma radlini bi qada'ik. Wa barik li fi qadarik. Wa barik li fi qadarik. O oh Allah, let me be pleased with what you have decreed. Radlini bi qada'ik. Let me be pleased and satisfied with what you have decreed. Wa barik li fi qadarik. And bless me in the decree that is to come. Qada is what comes after qadar. Qada is something, the divine decree which has already manifested itself. Qadar is what is still in the works in this, in this context here. Allahumma radlini bi qada'ik. Oh Allah, let me be pleased with what has been decreed for me. And make me pleased with it. Wa barik li fi qadarik. And then bless me in the divine decree that is to come. And then he says, Hatta la uhibba ta'jila ma akhart wa la ta'khira ma ajalt. Hatta la uhibba ta'jila ma akhart so that I do not love that anything that you have been delayed be hastened wala ta'khira ma ajalt nor that something that has been hastened be delayed allahumma radlini bi qada'ik oh allah please me with your decree wa barik li fi qadarik and bless me in the decree that is to come hatta la uhibba ta'jila ma akhart and so that I do not love that you hasten that which was meant to be delayed wala ta'khira ma ajalt and that you do not or that I do not love that you delay what was hastened for me this dua if we break it down is actually a phenomenal dua and a phenomenal diagnosis of what usually happens in the frustration that a person has with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if you look at our entire existence on this earth and this entire idea of a race against time. Every day we wake up and we feel like we're rushed from this thing to the next thing and we don't have time and we're trying to achieve this and trying to achieve that. And there's a great level of stress. And especially when the efforts and the plans that you put forward are either completely disrupted by something that is out of your control or that which you were pursuing is not coming to you as it should be coming to you with your planning. Time. I want it now. You think about the child in the car. Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? And many times when we're making dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we're implying, is it there yet? Is it there yet? Is it there yet? And that's when the Prophet sallallahu said, most people will give up on their dua. Why? Because they've made that same dua over and over again and it hasn't happened yet. And at that very moment, when it's about to come to you, the person says, Da'utu fa da'utu falam yustajabli. I made this dua, I made this dua, and it didn't happen for me. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions those that are being wronged and harmed and oppressed. And they say, Mata Nasrullah. When is the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala going to come? And Allah says about the oppressor, 
Or rather, the Prophet says about the oppressor, that Allah delays the oppressor. Meaning what? He allows that oppressor to continue in their oppression until they start to think that they're invincible, until they start to think that they're getting away with it. This is working. I'm not being held accountable. I have impunity. And then when Allah snatches him, he does not let him go. So both the oppressed is wondering when, and the oppressor is pushing the limits to see how far they can get with this. And there's a time factor involved. When is this all going to collapse? When is this all going to come to fruition? When is this going to happen? When is that going to happen? A person is pursuing marriage. When am I going to get married? A person is pursuing a career. When am I going to get that job? When am I going to get that opportunity? A person, you know, a couple waiting for a family. When is that child going to come? And then you have the children. When is this going to happen with my child? All along, you start to realize that we have to have a submission to Allah's timing. Allah's planning as a whole, His qadr as a whole, but His timing. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decreed something to come. And there's something very profound about this because as Ibn al-Jawzi rahimahullah said, if Yusuf alayhi salam focused on only getting out of prison, then he wouldn't have benefited from what was actually happening within the prison. And so when you're in a trial or a hardship, a person becomes so eager for that hardship to end. Ya Allah, when is this going to be lifted? That if they don't pay attention, they're missing out on the unique opportunities of that hardship to come close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As he said, one of the Salaf, one of the pious predecessors asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a dream, Ya Allah, how come this dua has not been fulfilled yet? And the answer was, Ya Abdi, O oh my servant, I love to hear your voice. I love to hear your voice in dua. And what, were you, what you were getting out of those moments of dua as the delay was happening was better than what you were seeking in the immediate moment. The delay became good for you because what you attained in terms of faith and character in that delay was far greater than what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala could have hastened for you in the moment. When you're in the midst of the trial, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala pushes you towards certain things or offers you the potential to push yourself towards certain things. The entire time you're saying, when, when, when? And it's important to take a step back and say, you know what? While I'm asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this trial to come to an end, let me pay attention. Oh Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. If you enjoyed this video, please do share it with friends and family. If you want to see more videos from this series, click on the box at the top. If you want to see other videos, click on the box at the bottom. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Thanks.